to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. Tom Hanks is an American treasure. Is he? Come on. No, if you're you right. if you don't you're like right. Tom Hanks, I, I can't. I don't trust anybody who doesn't like Tom Hanks. Oh, Castaway was on the other day. I have to watch Castaway every time it's on. Love Castaway. Castaway is one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, Forrest Gump. Look, he's in a million awesome movies. Yeah, and you know him, sh- Tom Hanks. Are we talking about the same? Yeah. Yeah, it's just Tom Hanks, right? Tom Hanks. Yeah, yeah, he's in a lot of stuff. Lots. You know. But you, it's you all, know. it's always great. And the reason why I bring him up today, usually on a Monday, it's a, a shit storm of some crazy news or something's happening in the world. Sure. Uh, this morning was Iran. Again, it's right. nice to uh, open up the old feed and see Tom Hanks trending number one. And the reason for it is is because he's playing Mr. Rogers I know. in a film, and they drop the trailer, and it's everything you want it to be. It's coming out in November. You know he'll get nominated for an Oscar. Absolutely. And I'm, uh, I'm excited for it. Like, it's one of those where you, you almost tear up at the end of the trailer, where you're like, oh, Did oh. you like that documentary? Uh, y- yes, I did. The, yeah. the Mr. Rogers doc? I did, yeah. yeah. I mean, it was awesome. But it's so sad that if someone's just nice and great, you're sort of like. And that's what it is in the trailer where you're trying to figure out there's got to be something else to this guy, to Mr. Rogers. Right. Right. And there isn't. And I think if anyone was going to play Mr. Rogers, it probably should be Tom Hanks because I think they're very similar where. You look at Tom Hanks and you're like, dude, there's got to be something dark there behind. And there isn't. There isn't. He's just like a great guy, collects typewriters. Yeah. Has been with the same awesome gal yeah. for, for 30 freaking years or whatever. 30, 40 years, whatever it is. Yeah. And, and you're like, what is it? Where's the bag of hair, Hanks? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Where are the toenail clippings? Um, his Instagram's hilarious, where it's just Hanks. H-A-N-X <laughs> is what he's shortened it to. Because he thinks it's hilarious, um, and so do I, and so does everybody else. Hanks, he dude. Just, <laughs> he doesn't get into politics. He doesn't do anything. No. He's just a fucking all-around great dude. And uh, seeing that today, I was just like, man, I, you're right. That's as close to Mr. Rogers as you can get. Like, you're looking for something, but there's nothing there with that guy. Yeah, and I think when they were casting, it was Me Too time, right? Prime Me Too time when they were casting. And they're like, we can't have this come out. Oh, yeah, yeah, And yeah, have yeah, the yeah. person that, they, that we cast yeah. have some kind of fucking me too against them, right? Yeah. So I think they were like, let's just get this, this movie through. The only way to do it is Hanks. It you won't have to worry about anything coming up yeah. to ruin the film, right? Yeah. And uh, he, he's the guy. That was the, right, that was the right call all the Absolutely. way around. And, and it looks like it's going to pay off. The trailer's fantastic. And I'm definitely here for it. Speaking of me, too, um, the other article that kind of was trending um, was, was Al Franken and his Me Too sitch this morning. So when I woke up. Yeah, are we over that? What happened? So me personally, because again, like, and I, I know we've talked about this on other shows with Aziz Ansari and Louis C.K. Al Franken was one of those guys who kind of got swept under the the rug, like forgot about it, where it was like, it was a couple of pictures. It was a political move. And I think that, I mean, I kind of wrote it off as that, where I was like, they want him out. Yeah. They got him out. Yeah. He knew that he was just doing it for that reason too. Yeah. Didn't really apologize profusely. You know what I mean? Was kind of like, this is what you guys want. So I'm leaving. But fuck you. Yeah. You know, no, he, he had a fuck you on the way out the door and you look at the pictures and you hear the lady and you're sort of like, I don't know. Some, you guys both it was, look it was like you're partying. It was peak me too moment. Well, one Where of them was on a, everything, anything you did during anything. that time 
was, fuck you, it's over, you're gone, career's over, we're taking back the night. And now there's seven senators who've, who've come out and said, we wish we didn't support the firing of Al Franken. I bet. Um, and, you, you know, you look back on it and you look at the photos where he was cupping a woman's breast when she was sleeping or mocking it or whatever. He's a comedian and whatever. And, you know, the other chick, the, the other girl was like, you forcibly kissed me or whatever. It's just like, eh. It's not as bad as everything else. Does it? Oh, Should I that the, cost I you your the job? the good old days, you know? Should that cost you your job? Look, Al Franken to me is a political shill just like everybody else. So I'm not going to fucking cry over this for, for Al Franken, you know? No, but... Because I think... I don't think he was a bad guy. I don't I either. Mean, my I, my, my sure. issue with him was everybody else who was doing that shit at the time, like he was... Fuck you! Fire them. Oh, okay. So that's why I, that's yeah. why I look at Al Franken, where it's like, hey, I man. don't really know. I guess I didn't really notice him doing that. Yeah, yeah, he was he was in that camp, and uh, okay. definitely with Trump and and all those other guys. Sure, sure, and, sure, sure. Uh, and that's why I say it all the time. But the hypocrisy is what we hate more than the actual act. Yeah. And so I, if he just did it, you're like, okay. But if you're calling for someone else to be you know, yeah, fired, whatever, career ruined, and they did basically the same thing that you did, then we're pissed. And, I, you know, the reason why I think this article came up today, because this was in The New Yorker, and then ended up spreading to a bu- bunch of other places like Huffington Post and all this other stuff, and then these senators who were interviewed came out and, and talked about it, and mm-hmm. uh, they said they wish they had a little more time to look at the allegations and all that stuff, but you didn't at the time, remember? yeah. I mean, it was fire first and then people let's try to figure it out later. People weren't doing this. So that you was can a, say all you want yeah. and, and be like, I wish we would have all you want, but you were the ones that did it. Yeah. So, and I was thinking that was the whole thing I was thinking during Me Too and rational women and people. That's all we thought was like, hey, but it was really unpopular to say so. So on this show, I would say it because we can say whatever we want, right? Right. So on this show, I would be like, I would like to get more information. Yes. I was never like, oh, right away. Right. Except for with Harvey Weinstein. I think that was like, because it was such an, a known thing. Right. It was kind of just like, oh, well, yeah, (laughs) obviously. But, um, yeah, I mean, look, with this one, I you think... You can't take it back. That's the problem. Yeah, so. you can't take it back. And I, I think with this one, I think the reason why this article was written... Because I, I try to take that approach, too. Of like, why now, right? Right. Who decided to do this now? I think with the, Demo- the Democratic debates going on and the primary starting and all that stuff, I think his voice would have been vital in today's Democratic Party. Not for... Not for politics overall, but for the Democratic yeah, because Party. He because was very moderate. He was, was. And they were sp- they're, they're extremely split now. Right. With AOC. You know, you got the AOC crew on one side mm-hmm. and then the traditional Democrats on the other. And he was right in the middle of that. And I think he could have been a, an important voice going forward for what's going to happen with this. Sure. Um, because the way this election is, this 2020 election is, is set up is... Pretty much racism versus, uh, you know, hope again, like that type of shit. Activism, right. extreme activism yeah. versus. And to me, I think that his voice would have been important during this, but mm. uh, now it's kind of nuked, right? Uh, not only is it fucking nuked, but. They're now saying that this, hey guys, this is the wrong strategy to proceed for 2020. And they could be, they could be fucked in this. Like, you're all racist. Because there was another thing over the weekend with that senator from Georgia who, you know, or the black, the black woman who was, uh-huh. hey, there was a, it was a hate crime and somebody told me go, to go back to my own country mm-hmm. and, and they found out that was a hoax. Okay. And she got buried pretty fucking quickly. And... You know, I, I think a voice like Al Franken now for the Democratic Party would be important. Yeah. Um, but he's, he's, he's out. 
He's out, and you can't take it back. That's the thing. You t- you cannot take it back. Uh, I I popped on a little bit of a and Z's uh, Z's. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you pop it on? I did, and he addressed it. He addressed it very, ve- uh, right in the beginning, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, did it really well. It just wasn't funny, but he's fine. The I think explanation of the stand up special itself. The stand-up special, he it was not that funny. He's got a different voice now. He talks differently. And, and Z, You mean tone and quality-wise? He Just the cadence of his voice. And he had a certain way of speaking before that I thought was really funny. Yeah. And very, like, I don't know, jovial. I, I can't really explain like it. Like a hip-hop-y kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah and just kind of like a hair, hair, hair. Um, so he speaks differently now, which was jarring for me. And um, like I said, he addressed this woman right in the beginning and did it beautifully, I think. And it really worked. Right. Um, the problem is he just isn't that funny. Well, I... And I thought he was before, so I, I don't know. I, it feels like, and maybe it's just my feeling that I'm getting, but I, I feel like he is, I don't know, broken, beaten up. Yeah. Yeah, I, trying to please everybody, and that's just not. That's it's, not you comedy. Gotta, You've got to have gotta a unique go, voice that cuts through everything. You got to go. Kind of like the the chainsaw in the background here. Can um, you hear it? Can, and if you can go back there, maybe chat with them. That'd be fantastic. We're not picking it up on the mic, so we're not. There's a there's a like a somebody's an anal grinder. An, oh, uh, anal! Because that's angle. what it feels. Somebody's like. using an angle gr- grinder outside an the anal, studio. Anal and, grinder. Uh, yeah. If if they could if you could pop on out and shut that down, oh, that'd okay. be rad. Okay, thanks, Jamie. Um, I don't know how that's gonna work, but uh, try. Well, if it's outside here on our lot, like I yeah, think exactly. it's at this house, but yeah. Okay. Um, thanks, Jamie. Yeah, man, it was that was really grinding my gears, literally grinding and it's my an, uh, face it's an off. Anal grinder, he said. Angle as okay, a hard G in okay, there. Okay. Hard G in there. Yeah, with with Aziz, if that if that's the case, right? And, and that's what it felt like. You should pop, I don't know, just literally you don't need to watch more than 10 minutes, but you have to go Louis C.K., right? You have to just say, fuck everybody. I'm going towards the people that like me. Yeah. And I have to fucking tone out the people that don't. Yeah. Uh, it's the only way. And you have to be a big, huge asshole. And I think Aziz is not. And that's the problem. He's like this guy that he, he wants always wanted everyone to like him, to right? To be liked by everybody, yeah. And he did for a little bit, and he had a taste of that, and he's hanging out with Kanye, and everyone loves him, right? Mm-hmm. This thing happens, and it just doesn't seem like he's recovered yet from that. But tell me what you think. I will. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a peek, but I, I know what you're saying, and I think a lot of people are like that these days. Yes. Where they're you're scared. S- yes. And and once with you with comedy, you can't do that. Once you switch, and, and you can't go back at that point. Like kind of like the the Al Franken thing. Once you you, you can't go back you can't at go that back. point. You can't say, "All right, never mind. We're all over it as a nation now. So let's go retroactively, the way that we would accuse people retroactively. Right. Things that they did twenty years ago, we're bringing up bullshit like that. Now we're gonna go back again. You guys, it just doesn't work that way. And that's why you have to think about it before you fucking say something like sexual harassment or, you know, publicly put that stuff out before any of the facts are out because you cannot take it back. Right. Chris Hardwick, Aziz, like he's fucking different now and it's sad and he didn't really do anything wrong. He had a bad date for the people that are fucking rapists. Like you should be broken down and let's not see you again. But like, right. Well, look, and the one that isn't, is Louis C.K., who probably did the worst out of all of them, by the way. Yeah, but yeah. he's coming through because yeah, guess he what? Doesn't care. You have to not care. What was his, his opening line of, what are you going to take away my birthday? Yeah. My life well, They can't sucks. take anything else away from me. What are you going to take away? My birthday? Awesome. You cannot start with an apology, and I think... No, you didn't. Did you really? What'd you do? No, you didn't. Is that real? Oh, oh you... 
we're, we're on I'm air like, we, hey, and the brother. audience can't hear you. Um, he said he bribed the guy with 50 bucks and then go. we uh, to turn off the we're worried about, you know, angle where salt. that's coming from, Jamie. Yeah, exactly. Your pocket friend. <laughs> um, that's some L.A. bullshit right that's there. That's fucking gangster I'll, I'll shit, that, Jamie. I'll tell that story right after this one, actually, because that's a really good one. Um, um, but, but, but sorry, to, what was to, I to, saying? To, to put a button on this, as far as comedy goes, right, I watched... Uh, comedians in cars getting coffee. Right. And Eddie Murphy was on, and it's great. And Eddie Murphy never does fucking interviews. And Jerry Seinfeld finally got him on, and it was a it was forty one minutes, which typically those things are like twenty minutes, right? So it was, it was a long one. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time in this special, they were talking about, is this funny? Like could that? Oh, because they're professional comedians. And that's no, the no, way no. But questioning, like there was a bunch of homeless people in L.A., right? Uh -huh. And Eddie Murphy is like, God damn, there's so many homeless people. And Jerry Seinfeld was just like, you know, why is there always one homeless person screaming at another? Like, even in that situation, like you're even in that situation, like somebody's giving you orders and you're like. Is it funny? No. But here's the thing. So but that was immediately asked. He was like, can I use that today? And, and Eddie Murphy that, was like, yeah. I don't know. Man. I don't, I don't know. know. I don't think. But then so, he said yeah. something else about these homeless people. And he was like, man, I think that's funny. And right. And that's the thing is like they were going back and forth on what's funny today. Exactly. Not overall time. Yeah. And the way that they described it was perfect where as a comedian, you say the worst shit to one another as soon as something happens. Privately. Oh, yeah. And, and he was like, dude, if somebody dies. You're uh, making fun of it two minutes later, to. like a friend you of yours, to, yep. and and that's that's kind of what it is, right? But can you get away with that on stage anymore? Is the question, and I don't know. Like, I think you have to come out swinging. Me personally, I think you have to come out swinging, and whatever you are, you are, because that's what comedy used to be. But it is definitely not like that anymore. And I can tell you, people are changing. Aziz is changing. They were trying to get. He was trying to talk Eddie Murphy into coming back and doing a a, a thing or whatever, and it was just like. You can tell there's that hesitation of like, man, can I tell the same fucking jokes that I used to tell? Like in today's world? I don't know. And um, I, one more thing about Az Aziz was he started with the apology. And I love that you're a good guy, but that is not how you start a comedy special. Right. Or anything really. Um, Louis C.K. did his ab ab apology first, right? Yes. Did it right after, yes. issued that, and then went away. And then when he came back, he does not say one thing about it. I mean, he says, what are they going to take away my birthday? But he's not apologizing to the women. He's not, he's not making doing anything sure. anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, so he's all done with I that. I think which... that, unfortunately, and I got that advice from someone a while ago, where, like, I had done a podcast and, like, pissed some people off, whatever. And the guy, this, our friend, Hollywood, was like, don't apologize. Just don't apologize, right? Because it admits, I don't know. It's an, in, it's an interesting thing because your instinct is to apologize, right? Like yeah. your instinct is to be like, hey, I need to address this. Like, I'm really sorry. But it puts you in this different category. And, and him starting with that apology, everything after that was just different. He was on a, this is so sad to say. But he was on like a lower, a place of forgive me instead of listen what the fuck I have to say. I'm funny. These yeah. are my jokes. It has nothing to do with that girl. Right? Yeah. So it's, it's a, two different ways of doing it. And you're seeing which one, we'll see which one is more successful. So it's like Louis C.K. that doesn't fucking say shit and is kind of still going down the asshole road. Yeah. And then Aziz that apologizes in the very beginning. Super serious. And then tries to do comedy. It just doesn't work. After after the new book comes out, like we'll be able to finally share some stories about, you know, aggressive comedy and content and where it's heading right now, like on a big scale. And uh, I'll I'll address some fucked up shit that I yeah. went through over it. Um, but uh, yeah, it, I, it it is different. And I don't know whose camp told him to do it, or if or if it was himself. I think it was him, and that's what I'm telling you is that I think he's 
he's just broken and he's scared of this new climate and he got a fucking taste of it and it was not good and you cannot continue. So the same thing with my podcast, right? That I like, it just was different and pissed some people off, whatever. I I was in my head about making everybody happy. Right. And you, if you do that, you can't, yeah, you're you dead, can't. right? Yeah. Yep. In the water. So the only thing that we can do, like in this show, I can just be myself. That's it. I can't be anyone right. else. And he is trying to be someone else. Ah, uh, gotcha. To I'll make sure that I'll, everyone's yeah, happy, to make sure he's not pissing anyone off, that he's handling things in the right way. And that's not funny. And it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Right? To yeah. see someone trying to be something they're not. So fuck you dude <laughs> the james ain't changing uh jamie appreciate you uh shutting up that bandsaw by the way i i'm gonna tell you a quick story about my that exact noise and wh how much that bothers me or an audio show or anything you're filming okay do you remember uh dc stages in downtown la we shot there yes i loved it yes they're, they're great um if you need because parking is really hard in LA, obviously. They've got parking, uh, their stages, they've got a million, they're 50 million sets in one building, and it's amazing, and they're all decorated. Every show we see in LA, they've used it probably Everyone, once for something some courtroom, yeah. some jail. Yeah, you we, go, oh, DC stages. Yeah, so. I, I don't, I can't remember a movie I, I've produced that we didn't use, end up using DC stages at least for like two days. That's how amazing they, they are. They stay out of your hair, they're good. Yeah, yeah. They kind of uh, like let you. Yeah, there's a crazy lady that owns it, so luckily you deal with somebody else. But uh, regardless, it's great. And the but the one big problem with it is is there's a and it looks like a giant warehouse from the outside. So it's nothing impressive from the outside. And so you go in and you're like, oh shit, this is really cool. Um, well, next door there was another huge warehouse about the same size. And when I say warehouse, I'm talking maybe. 80,000 square feet, 75,000 square feet, something like that. Like I couldn't really put a number on it. I, I, I think it's about 80 would be my guess, but there's also an upstairs, so I, who knows. Anyways, the warehouse next door was also 80,000. Every time you shoot there, and you hear that as loud as we, we just heard here, yep. you cannot film movies with that noise going on. You have to go next door and bribe the guy. And he knows it. And he knows it $500. Sees... The only thing that I think, I, I literally believe that this guy just bought this warehouse or was in his thing. And you walk in and there's only three huge saws like that. <laughs> and one Mexican dude just <laughs> turning, <"Wah!" them> on. <laughs> turning them on, leaving it on. And so you go and pay off the guy $500 in cash. Um, and oh, brilliant! Every by the way. single fucking day. Brilliant. Finally, there was one job where we, because we were shooting out of there for like two weeks straight. One movie, I forget which one it was, but we finally just cut him like a flat fee, where it was like, "Hey, man, do I literally have to just come in over here with five hundred dollars in cash every single day, or can we do a flat fee for this?" You know, because I was like, you know, you're one worker here in this eighty thousand square foot building, like, um, and the, the standard joke is you walk over and you were like. What kind of business do you own? Mm -hmm. And he's like, ah, we're, you know, building stuff. And you're like, yeah, yeah. we're doing stuff and building things. And yep. um, I, to we this have day, that I've always of, wondered how much that guy awesome. makes because you oh. walk in and you're like, you motherfucker. That's it. Yep. Kills it, that's dude. It. And, and it's just such a pain in the ass. And you're just like, fuck, man, what do you do? Like, what was this guy doing? Was he building a house? A storage container behind us on, on our lot. Okay. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Um, you sent him to Lowe's. If it's on our okay. good, yeah. If it's on our our lot, man. The fuck, bro. Um, you know, get out, get the fuck out of here. We got new studios. You know, come on. Well, what do you want from me? I'm Italian. Oh. And a goose and a da -do -do -goosh. Uh, Those people always grind my gears as well. Oh, what do you want from me? I'm Italian. Oh. Uh, I wonder what my neighbor's doing now. Speaking of LA, I had that neighbor for six years who was, what? That was the Italian guy. Oh, what like, do you want what you from me? I'm Italian. Oh, you know? okay. Every yeah. single thing, it was like, 
No, you're just drunk at like noon. It's the new vegan for me. Like if someone's Italian, they'll fucking tell you about it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I'm Italian. Like that guy we met in New Orleans. I'm Italian. So, you know, yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. like, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what that means <laughs> to me right now in this conversation, but you're Italian. You, you fucking put it in there somehow. And the at, wife's at no, vegan. At no point have I ever said I'm Irish or whatever the fuck I am. Like, um, just, I don't care. I really don't care. I'm American. That's it. I'll shove that in people's dick holes. Sure. I'm American. I'm patriotic as fuck. You know? Yeah. What do you want from me? I'm American. Yeah. I got, I got uh, bud heavies, and I, I, I squeeze my brethren every day because I'm American. Right. You know? What does that even mean? I guess for Italians, it's like. Loud. Yeah. Like if they're talking a lot or something. I'm Italian, you know? So yeah. it's like. Or if I. He ate a lot, I guess. Bob. Bob was his name. And uh, was it Bob? Yeah, his name was Bob. And uh, your neighbor, Robert. Yes, Robert shortened to Bob, Scientologist. And uh, he would stash beers in a um, in a shed because he, he didn't his wife didn't want him to drink. But Perfect. he would drink two to four every single day without fail. Perfect. And then he'd always he'd say the same thing to me every day for like six years of, <laughs> don't tell my wife. Right. He's like, no, I'm, I'm not. Um, and I have no reason to come over and tell your wife <laughs> that you're, you know? He likes the, the mystery. I bet she doesn't even care. He just <laughs> likes to have that little, so the don't place, tell my wife. The place I lived in was like Melrose place. There was only maybe... I don't know, 12 un units in it. And it was in a perfect square and there was a pool in the middle. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I enjoyed it and, and I liked it. And uh, it was up in the hills and it was great. And um, the, reason why I tell, <laughs> the reason why I tell this story is, have you ever had something when you, like when you live in an apartment or a house or whatever, right? You have something that you want to get rid of so bad, but you're like, man, I don't want to put the time or energy into calling someone like a couch or a fr an old fridge and being like, man, I don't want to put the time or energy into calling over friends or renting a truck or calling, you know, in LA, if you called a service to come and do it for you, they'd still charge you like mm -hmm. 150, 200 bucks. And I was like, how do we get rid of this thing? Right. So my thing was, remember the, the very first big screen TVs? They were a giant box. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a giant Huge. box. And it was like... On rollers. Yes, like, yes. Yeah. R roller wheels. And it weighed a fuck ton. And, you know, there was no way out with that goddamn thing. Because if the tube broke inside of there... Done. It would shatter for like two miles. And it would ruin everything in its sight. And I was like, man, how the fuck am I going to get this thing out of here? So, I rolled on over because I was getting a new, you know, the the flat screens that just came out right sure. and i got a flat screen and the same thing they were like dude we're to, to lug this thing out it's gonna be like 150 bucks and so i went over to bob's house and knocked on the door and i said hey bob man i got something for you, you know you've always liked that big screen tv and he's like, oh yeah oh yeah I'm italian. yeah I'm italian i love big screens i love big screen i'm italian <laughs> what do you want from Whoa, me what do you want from me right and i was like yeah yeah and i go hey man um, so I'm, I'm getting a new TV and I was like, and I'm, I'm trying to word it correctly. So it didn't seem like I was pushing it off on him, you know? And I was like, yeah, I've got some uh, cameras that I've got to hook up to this. So I need like the, the HDMI cables and things like that, you know, whatever. And I was like, but what, what I, what I noticed is you have a smaller TV and what I'd like to do is instead of selling it on Craigslist or something, I want to give it to you. Blammo. I want to give it to you. And he was like. Are you, are you kidding me, man? Body. Are you kidding me? And I was like, no, no. And he's just like, yeah. I was like, dude, it's on wheels. All you have to do, roll it across the hall and put it right in your house. Beautiful. It'll be amazing, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and he was like, oh, shit. And I was like, I'll help you roll it. And he was like, great. So I rolled it in over there, you know, whatever. Uh, at that point, I think there was only maybe six or seven HD channels. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because that, that's an SD TV. It's a standard sure. definition TV, you know? And about like six months later, it converted to everything converted to HD. And then he was stuck with the giant SD TV in his house. And all I could say, what do you want from me? I'm Irish. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, so he's, I, to this day, I don't know what happened with that. I hope it's, part of me ho hopes it's still there. 
That would be great, wouldn't it? He's rocking SD. Yeah. Just blue still rocking bloods. SD, you know? Blue Bloods and SD. <laughs> Nothing like a little Blue Bloods. <laughs> A little, and S- SD, a little Selleck in SD. The first daddy. Yeah. still That guy's still a fucking oh daddy. Oh, my gosh. Your mom had something on the other night. She has always loved Selleck. Like uh, Selleck is her. Every mom. Every for mom. For sure. Yep. Uh, Selleck is her um, end all, be all, the man. Her alibi. Um, or his alibi. or Her, her alibi. Her alibi. Horrible movie. It's a Tom Selleck romantic comedy. It is. He did a couple of those. And he's great. I love Selleck. I've always been a huge fan of Selleck, right? That movie was terrible. uh, Sure. You know, just watching it. it Terrible in the best way. I love it so much. Terrible. And uh, but you look at Selleck and you're like, man, still got it, dude. Oh, he still got it in every way. Still got it. And multi-generational daddy. 100 percent. You know what I mean? 100 percent. My mom loved him. I love him. Yeah. He, he probably my grandma loves him. Probably. I call her up and ask her. Call up Grams. I'm sure she does. Call up Graham Grams. Give her ask her if she, what her take sure is on selling. Sure she does. Yeah, I think she does. Uh, I know I know what else your grandma likes. Ghost beds. Yeah. Talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. I'm glad it went there and not somewhere else. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, was going to say anal. Your, your grandma. I you know, know what, what you know what else she loves. I anal. know what your grandma likes. Wee-ee. Definitely don't want to hear that from your husband. Yeah, I, I, I know what your grandma. I, I was likes. never going to. You know what else your grandma say. likes? I was never going to. Calm gonna down, say. bro. Yeah. Calm down, dude. You need to calm down about my grandma. No. Like you have to stop. I was never going to say. You keep talking about what my grandma likes. Hey, she likes getting her 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 cheeks clapped on on a ghost bed. Like I would never say that about. Your grandmother. You keep talking. No, I just want to. I, I want about, you to. You will never stop talking about what my grandma likes. Yeah, at ghostbed.com forward slash ringer bros, I would never pick out a mattress for your grandmother um, and say, this is probably what she likes to get her cheeks clapped on. I would never say that about your grandmother. Sure. Um, it's because we just don't do that on this show. Mm-hmm. Um, I would never say how comfortable the pillows are. You know? For what? <laughs> well. <laughs> Like there's certain sexual positions that uh, a grandmother that my would grandma need. grandma likes? To, any grandmother out there would probably need. Dude, uh, I'm telling you, this age, is the last day. It's been going age, on for way too many days. And this age, is the last day just saying, that you talk about what my grandma likes. I'm telling you, it ends today. At that age, Jabes. Um, you know, it ends today, dude. You need pillows. There's nothing more comfortable than a pillow from Ghost Bed. If you're military or first responder, scroll to the bottom of the page and you get 15% off forever on all of their products. If you're a regular human like myself, though, they got them deals, 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 deals set up. Bundle package, $7.99 up in that bitch. Uh, everybody's getting me at ghostbed.com forward slash drink bros. Um, as get, always, 36 get months. Get them for your gam gam. Get them for your gam gam. Whatever she's into, you know. Ross knows what she likes. Yeah, straight mish. No, um, <laughs> it's terrible. It's a, it's a horrible thing that I just said. Uh, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros has got mattresses, 36 months, no interest, pay as you go program. hi Nobody's offering that up in that beaver. Um, man, that took a dark turn. We should probably go to the next one. Strikeforceenergy.com. <laughs> Shoom, boom, 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 shabloinkers. Shabloinkers. Four amazing flavors. Get your granny all hopped up. Yeah, get a little strike force in your granny. Rub it in that skin. It'll mm, rejuvenate it. Get them in those wrinkles. Yeah, it also make it really sticky. Um, <laughs> it's a really sticky product. And, <laughs> and that is what your grandma likes. We all know. Grandmas love being sticky. Um <laughs> Go to strikeforceenergy.com. Why are you so dumb? A 10 pack, a 40 pack, and a 750 milliliter bottle. It's a tasty line, a tiny little tin pouch. You just rip it open and squeeze it and, and apply it to your skin. Um, you put it in your drink. Or your drink. And uh, there's no carbs or no sugars, which grandmas also love. You know? Uh, <laughs> go to strikeforceenergy.com. Get on it today. It lasts longer than five hour energy. Uh, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off at StrikeForceEnergy.com. 
Last but not least, this is what you came for, Jabes. Straightrazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Ooh. Oh, you rock it? Yeah, we do. Your granny does. Your granny does. And this is all the... This is the exclusive groovy. straight razor for grandmothers mm-hmm. everywhere. Because Ross knows what your granny likes. Yep. And Ross knows what your get- granny likes. <laughs> That'd be a nice song. Ross knows what, what your granny, granny likes. likes. What? Ross, <laughs> Ross knows, knows what, what your granny, granny likes. likes. Yeah. Uh, Grandma's like being sticky. Sticky and then shaving it off. Um, grandmothers love to <laughs> shave themselves with straightrazors.com. There's nothing that an unsteady hand with a, with a straight razor. <laughs> At that age. Not all grannies <laughs> are shaky. Okay. You can be a granny at what? I guess, man. 45. Show 50. me an unshaky granny and I'll show you a, a kid who's having another child too soon. Um, <laughs> straight, Straightrazors.com. Apologize, James. Show me an unshaky grandma. Yeah. Show me an unshaky grandma. And I'll show you a, a child who's probably too young to be having a child. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Um, come on, J-Balls. Uh, straightrazors.com is for grandmothers and grandfathers everywhere. Kits, shaving cream, shampoos, conditioners, all of these products that are lined up on the desk. Subscribe on YouTube um, and watch our lovely, lovely show. Smolder Cologne. The best aftershaves, aftershave. the business. Go to straightrazors.com, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. Beard to beard, and we're, oil. We're, we are 26 sleeps away from Thank You For My Service coming out. Um, book, I get to write with my beef fry, Matt Best. Fucking hilarious. Pre-order it today. We're, getting, we're actually getting close to the New York Times bestseller list. Like, when I say close, I mean like close to number one. Um, okay. I think we would have a decent shot at it. I'll, I'm going to try to get some numbers, exact numbers. Yeah, as the we're shows trying come up, to but, knock uh, off Michelle. Michelle Obama, correct. We want to be, gosh, you guys, wouldn't that be awesome? It was. Uh, there's another book that's overtaken it. Let me ask you if you've heard of this. Um, Crawdads. Crawdads? Yeah. It's a novel? Uh, it is, yes. No. I, I believe... I, I believe Reese Witherspoon might have bought it. Where the crow, where the crawdads sing. Oh, that sounds like a a great beach read. It's Delia Owens, and nah. uh, so she's been. This book has been number fucking one for the last because couple of weeks. Reese, yes. Jesus. Uh, oh, here's why: a Reese Witherspoon Hello Sunshine book club pack okay. pick. Is it, she's got she's got her own book club. Yeah, her. So that's uh, it's like she's trying to rival o- uh, Oprah, and then ah. Jenna Bush Hager has one too that's pretty successful. Like if she says a book is good, it it goes number one. So fucking a man. Yeah, it's it's uh, whew, boss. I mean, this thing is. We're gonna go hardcover. It's number number seven in Kindle right now, um, but this fucking thing has been number. Now it's number three now. Um, it's been number one for a very long time, surprisingly. Okay. And I know Reese Witherspoon bought the rights. Um, All right. To for, to make it into a movie. So. There you go. There's your answer right there. Um, and she is Hello Sunshine or Bless Him? Hello Sunshine, I okay. believe it's hers, yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. But yeah, I mean, looking at it right now, let's see. Yeah, it's uh, Michelle Obama's 10 now. So. I think we, I mean, I think we got this. The subtle art of not giving a fuck is number 13. That book is still there, man. That's crazy. Fucking name. It's been a I mean, long it's time. good. It's all right. We had, we, you know, I read it. You read it. Um, it's one of those things where you buy it in an airport and it's an easy read. Fucking book's only like 150 pages. Man, it's crazy. It's a crazy easy read, that thing. And it's just, it is a really great cover yep. and a really great title. It's like marketing 101, right? Yeah. So it's like the colors. Yeah. It's like orange and black. Yep. Fuck on the cover. I bought it way before. Like, I bought it a long time ago. Mm-hmm. But I think all of those things worked on me. Like, I don't even know why I was buying it. I was just I know like, why I, I was. think I need to get this. 
I was in an argument with my um, publisher at the time over because Matt's original title was uh, "Freedom the Fuck On." Mm-hmm. They were like, "You can't put fuck in the title," and I was like, "Yeah, you can." I was like, "If you bleep it, like everybody's doing it these days," and um, uh, sure enough, Shabloinkers. Uh, the subtle art of not giving a fuck comes out. It's number one. And they were like, all right, all right. I mean, I, I guess, you know, we'll mm. think about it. And I was um. like, cool. Um, but yeah, that was number one for a long time. And I get sucked in. So I bought, I ended up buying it in an airport just to see, all right, whatever. And then I think the follow up is called uh, how to unfuck your life. So it's like, perfect. Come on. Brand. Same, uh, same formula. Yeah. I do have a crime corner later, so don't let me forget. I will not let you forget it, Jabes. I will not let you forget it. Thank you. You're welcome. That's what I do for you. I'm a champion and you know it. <laughs> what are we talking about? My heart is full. We're, yeah, here's what we're going to talk about, Jabes. We're getting ready for a fight. The fight of our lives. The fight of our lives is coming up, Jabes. Um, they're redistricting our, our schools. Yeah, man, mm, this, mm, this mm, is, mm, this got mm, heated, mm. um, at the neighborhood and, uh, and it always does. Cause I, I, you know, that happened to me as a, as a child. Yeah. I almost said a child, which I like, mm-hmm. um, you know, yeah. cause, cause it's kind of monster energy going through a drywall as a baby. Right. As a small child, you know, from <laughs> like when I was a small child. And I put my fist through a drywall and drank my first monster. I knew that I would go on for great things and be destined for great things. No, but the school thing is real. And there's going to be a, what a community thing. Meeting, I'm wondering yeah. how hard I can go. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what's going to work. What's not going to work. We have chosen. We need someone to speak and the neighborhood has chosen you. Yes, Not yes, they sh- have. Not sure if that's the best idea, but we do need to find out well, I, I believe what every- is going to work because there are certain things that they don't give a fuck about, right? Yeah, property value is one of them. Property I was value. Surpri- I was surprised to hear that. Because it's not, they don't give a shit about that. Yeah, but that's why every- That's why you're pissed, but they don't care. So we need to no, 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 find I, I, some- I'm, not, I'm, I'm pissed about, well, I'm pissed about that, but that's second. I'm pissed about- you buy a house in a in a certain neighborhood because you want your kid to go to the best school, and then I think our oh, hey, we're fucking switching it, and it's, yeah, exactly, right so before to me, our kid's supposed to go into that school, it's very strange. First priority, obviously, child's education, right? Yes. Um, second priority, property value. Like you know, you're worried about property value for us, but they don't care about that. But for everyone else, I mean, dude, anybody buying a house out there. With kids, the first thing you look at on Zillow or Trulia, and it's at the bottom. It, it tells you the school district on every single yes. listing. And that's how you buy your house and why. Yes, yes, yes. If you have kids. Because let's face it. I mean, there were some other houses across town where you're like, fuck, man. I could live on a goddamn, I could live on the river, you know? Oh, dude. Really light it up. And my kids would be going to like, you know, like the worst schools of all time. And you're like, shit. Right, and what's the song for the worst school? There isn't. I just, I'm just strumming a song of oh, like okay, okay. some point, country. Point, point. It, it's a country hillbilly it country? song. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You know, like I just play some. I, I picture some people uh, playing spoons on a washboard on their chest. You know. So I think our another argument that might work. We have been that that neighborhood has been in that school district since it opened. Right? Yeah. So we've been in there the whole time. And then the other thing is they're talking about overcrowding. But what they're doing is just switching the hundreds. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they're saying they're like 300 people over. Right. So they're getting rid of 300, but they're adding another 250 or something. Right. Of just different areas. Right. Um. I just don't know why. That's the thing, I guess. Why? What are we trying to do with this? So it's not overcrowding because they're not. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Are they trying to get more? Is it like underprivileged people to be able to go? I, I don't understand how it's working. No. Cause right. The, the, so if look, that's the, what it is. Yes, I would like for the, the neighborhoods they're adding aren't underprivileged. Right. So, it's, so for me, it's just like, you know, if it is really overcrowding, just get rid of that many people. 
don't get rid of that many people and move different people in that right. have never been in this school district. So that's that's the idea. And I think that's the I think that that could be the main point. Could be. Uh, or you can just let me take the mic and then everybody can shut the fuck up. And that's kind of what was worrying everyone last night. Um, <laughs> when you started really talking, I think we all sort of looked around like. Oh. I mean, I'll, I'll come in like a young Dr. King up in that bitch. And that's the thing. I don't. They're not going to respond to. Way down. Any kind of. In Alabama. Like I'll get fucking old school. Preacher. Racist? On the fucking cool, cool, no, cool. I think no, I like that not, too. There's nothing no, racist about no. that. I, you need uh -huh. a, a firm, strong Dr. King voice when you're doing sure. shit like this. So, and I think they've elected the appropriate person to stand up for the community and the children We're all by nominating later, Ross Master yeah. Antonio <laughs> or Enthal James Patterson mm -hmm. to speak. Sure. And uh, I think I'll just show up in that framed, like I'll take the O.J. Simpson jersey out Wear that, wear that to the, the school and just say, hey, All right, guys. So we just need to get ready for our kid to go to a different school and um, <laughs> just be prepared for that. And uh, look, again, this is some privileged shit, by the way, because the other school is great. So it is. Yeah. But you have to drive by it's farther, the first, which is the only thing that I care here's about. The, here's the fucked up thing. You I'm going to be drive driving by, by the school that I paid to be <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> driving right by there a, like two miles past. So it's like. That's shitty. Again, yeah. it's not a bad school. It's not going to be the end of the fucking world. But um, it just doesn't make sense to me. I need it to be explained in a way that's like, you can't tell me it's overcrowding. Yeah. Because that's not true. Like, what? Just tell me what it is. You know what I'm saying? All I need what is... What is the real answer? And then I could be like, fine. Here's, here's what people really don't understand um, in our neighborhood and in the community. All I need is one goddamn phone number of whoever it is. I could change their mind in maybe less than an hour after this show airs. Easily. Mm. One phone number and I could change the, the, the world immediately. How? You know what happens on this show in Drinking Bros once you drop a phone number? Um, that's, that's it forever. So if you want to welcome the thunder... I think. Nope. Yeah. No. I look. I'm, I don't think that, and I love you guys, but I think that. Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And I love how you go after people. I, I really, really, really do, and I appreciate it. But uh, you're not our uh, bulldogs. You know what I mean? Like it needs to be something that you give a shit about as well. No, it's not. And that. my I, kid, where he's going to school, is not going to be your fucking fight, right? But you want to hear me give a Dr. King speech? Way like that's what the people are really, really wanting. And if we can get that videotapes, like holy shit, it would be amazing. I mean, really, really amazing. And that, uh, if I can just go in and go full Dr. King on there, uh, it'd be great. Because, like, let, let's face it, I'm not, I'm not meek around a microphone. Mm -hmm. I'll take that right off the fucking stand. Sure. Walk um, around. Oh, yeah. Work the room. I'll, I'll go Eddie Murphy raw red leather suit up in that bitch and talk about school districts for a good hour. Like, and again, the other school is fine. So I'm just going to have to matter of fact, get used to that. Alec, uh, call down to Dead Crow Comedy. I'm going to start working on a one hour uh, set that I can workshop up until this thing goes. And mm -hmm. then. We can really, really get deep, you know? Uh, make some phone calls. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Work on that. Work on that. And uh, we will get someone else on the, just as a backup, <laughs> just as a backup in case you can't make it for some reason. Oh, boy. I'm, I, I got to get a, I got to get a suit now. I got to get a, a red leather suit now. All I'd have to do really is just prepared. turn off your GPS on your phone. Oh, and, and you, I, like, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be know. able to even get out of the neighborhood. No, so I wouldn't. If you happen to not be able to make it, I don't know. I don't know. Nothing would happen for that to go down. But if you can't make it, I just, we'll just have some kind of backup, like a lawyer <laughs> or something like that. But yeah, 
No, and I, I want you to work on it, and I want you to get the suit, and I want you to do do all the things. New plan, you then. <laughs> you're gonna, if you're going to hide the GPS. <laughs> um, yeah, if, you, if you're going to hide the GPS. Oh, you do have the phone number. Whoa. Of what? Of the new, the new Hanover County. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. No, but it's not them. It's a private firm, you guys. They hired a private firm. So oh, it's not who, them. It was the firm then. I don't know. Fantastic. I'll, I'll get that find number. That out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, Way. that would be that would be better because it is a private consulting firm. So I don't yeah. mind you going after them, but the district. Yep. And if you take that gonna GPS be... away, I'm gonna go. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go back to the future. Uh huh. Um, with the mayor where you, where they had the bullhorns on top of the van. <laughs> Vote for mayor, whatever. Yeah, the, mayor. Time Machine County or whatever it was, you know? Sure. Mayor. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I want to, I'll parade, I'll roll that bitch it, I'll a, a, a cruise it, cruise that, that van at a nice five mile per hour <laughs> predator, sl- like slow roll where you're, you know, mm-hmm. child predator where you're, maybe the wrong thing to say around, around a school district meeting, but mm-hmm. um, I'll, it's the, I'll, I'll drive real slow, homie. Um, yep. You never know, homie. Around five miles an hour and just be, then with the bullhorns through that, because I'll be in my thing, my CB radio thing through the thing, yep. doing the Martin Luther Ham, King thing. Yeah. Way! And then, you know, I'll, uh, eventually my message will get heard. So you do whatever you want, Jabes. But uh, I'll find a way. I'll find a <laughs> Life way. finds a way. Life finds a way, doesn't it? It really does when it comes to you. A picnic finds a can of beans. Um, and that's what I love in this world. You know what else I love? Crime Corner! Crime Corner! Crime Corner! Yes. Oh! I've got a bunch of detectives on this one. Sorry. Okay. I mean, All right. this is really a, a fave in the, in the precinct. This is the big one. This is, we've all gone after this story. Um, so this is from... Eric Nelson, Jake Walls, Detective Trey Wetzel, mm. Scott Lopez, Aaron Smith, and wow. Abel Hernandez. If I missed you, I'm sorry. I can't. I don't know how to use the computer, the computer that well. Yep. But these are the people that really worked hard on this case. So good job, guys. Um, so uh, jealous husband cuts off wife's lover's penis with scissors and then runs away with it oh. so it cannot be reattached so it's not a uh bobbit sitch bobbit sitch they're okay. not going to find it in a field he hid it he hid the dick so it is done and gone so what is what so it, alex bonilla oh doesn't that sound from that's like one of uh, bobby uh, bonilla mm, you're thinking of bobby bonilla day yeah. july 1st yeah <laughs> 49 <laughs> Broke into the man's mobile home. It's it's uh, in where? Where do you think? Where do you reckon this mobile would be? home? I'm gonna say Florida. There you go. And held him <laughs> at gunpoint before tra- tying him down mm-hmm. and cutting off his penis with a pair of scissors. With a pair of scissors. Oh, yes. Caught his wife having sex with the man. Yep. Now this is a warning to everyone. With well, the way you're waving that finger. It's almost like his penis on like the show. Yeah, like a witch's, like a witch's finger. finger. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the neighbor. Uh, okay, so ba- back in May, he found this happening. Waited till now. Okay. So this is a sneak attack, right? So he found out in May. Why wait that three they, months? Because you don't see it coming. He is definitely a penis cutter. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, he knows his Do way you know around what I a, mean? a penis. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's unclear whether the attack was premeditated. I'm guessing it was. Huh. Or a crime of passion. But um, so the guy, the police were called and the guy, they were called about a stabbing. As they arrived, d- dispatchers told them the victim who originally made the call had told them his penis had been severed. Terrified man told cops that after tying him down and, and mutilating him at gunpoint, Bonilla then ran away with the penis. Ooh. Ooh. He was arrested, but the victim's penis has not yet been recovered. And that is the 
like bitch of this story. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's the worst part because my God. Yeah. Once that penis is cut off, you can't get it back. Um, I wonder what an animatronic penis is like these days. Probably better. But <laughs> even the Bobbit thing, it was like you found it in a field and we put it back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's a crazy one to me. Um, that, that's, that's an absolute crazy one to me. Uh, our producer, Jamie, has found the consulting firm who, uh, oh, I know that number, actually. That's a 614. That's, a, that's Columbus, Ohio. Ooh. Oh, boy. That's my stomping grounds, brother. Oh. You're in Ohio State territory. Congratulations. In our neighborhood, we have quite a bit of Ohio State fans, if by those, the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and if those motherfuckers, if I found out where they lived and their kids went to school up in Columbus, because I know that area so well, I would be able to drop bombs on that. Um, that's great info, Jamie. Good. We got a number. So daddy doesn't get, didn't get the Dr. King speech. Guess what, dude? We'll be doing a telethon uh, with one number. Don't give anything. I'll put the suit on here. We'll go live and then just flash it at the bottom over and over and over again. Um, man, that's great. That is great. <laughs> um, anyway. You know, wait. Sorry. Sorry, God. So fucking racist, bro. It's not. It I used is, to do. You dude. know, I, I used to do a Martin Luther King in my in my standup. And, um, it's a different time, for brother. Years. It was a, it's a different time it's back not, then. Gosh, it's not. We just talked about this at the top, James. You got to be the comedian you are. You got to be the comedian you are. Sorry about it. I guess. You know what? You, you know what else really is fucked did, up? I actually really got took hired. That and, and ran with it. I actually got hired to do that voice too. I get paid by a, another firm too. Different time, maybe. Yep. Maybe not. Yeah, definitely. Maybe not. Definitely. So were the fifties. Um, it's definitely a different oh time back boy. then too. Not, not, not at all. It not wasn't. All. It was the same. No, but you know, interestingly enough, um, I, to show you what it, how much it's changed, or or maybe hasn't changed really, was on the last time I was up for SNL because that that impression was on one of the SNL reels. Um, and it killed. I used to do it in stand up, and it killed. Uh, I did it in an all black club too, and it killed. I won first place. Um during an open mic at, a, at an all-black club in Atlanta. And uh, the last time I was up for SNL, they were looking for Obamas, and they were, they were actively looking for white people. Hmm. And I was like, what were you going to do? Were you just right. going to throw a little color on or what, you know? And they were- Different time. Yeah. 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 And I don't know if you remember, pull, pull up Jimmy Fallon doing uh, Chris Rock. He was full blackface on the show for that. Full blackface. Pull up, pull up uh, Fallon doing it on the show. And it's a great Chris Rock. I don't know why anybody's Shh, a, sure. offended by it. It was a really great impression. We're not going to go the... Uh, no, but they're also the friends Kelly, in real what's life. Kelly, what's her name? I even forgot her name. Who, Kelly Ripa? No, the one that lost the show. We're talking about blackface. We hated her. Oh, Megan Kelly. Megan Kelly. Yeah, yeah. Well, she didn't lose it for talking about blackface, but yeah. Yeah, she did. No, she lost it because her ratings were garbage it was but that they were looking for the last thing to get her the fuck out of there and that but was it is it, a but. cringy segment by oh, the way 100 of her talking about i don't know what the problem is we used to do that as kids what are they so pissed off about yeah, yeah. everyone in the fucking on the panel was like uh, but a good impression is a good impression me, it's uh, not like okay yeah okay sure 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 so yeah yeah but we got the number now so i feel i feel pretty confident about that Okay, so you're gonna call, or you're gonna have? Oh no, I'll make a, I'll make an initial call. I just want to find out where it's located because okay. it's, it's in, that that number is Columbus, Ohio. I know that much for okay. sure. That because okay. I used to have a, an, that was my old number. Right. So I just want to see where they're located. Right. Give them a little. Give them uh, a little peekaboo. Will they be at the meeting? I mean, some of uh, their people will be there, like. That's who's doing the meeting. That's great. Ah, if that if that's the but case, it's the board and them, right? I mean, that's who they hired. So that, that'd be perfect if it is. That would really work out in our favor, right? Um, because if their kids are in the Upper Arlington School District, then you can say, "Hey, man, I know all of your school districts there. My sister went to school there, right? 
Um, so I know all of their motherfucking school districts. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, speaking about the way things are changing um, that, that you were talking about, with kind of a running accidental running theme through the show. It's, it's not all written out. You know, we have bullet points and things like that. No, um, we are really good. With the Top Gun 2 trailer that dropped, and we talked about it on last show, um, people were uh, talking about Tom Cruise's uh, flags missing from his jacket. And I was just like, shit, Ameri- man. The American flag? No. Oh. So the American flag is on there. Okay. Right? But they've pulled uh, the Japanese and Taiwanese flags. Why? To appeal to Chinese cinema because ah. you make more money in China than you do in United States theaters now. And it's like With two to movie, one. It's not even sure. fucking close. Yeah. So they pulled from his iconic bomber jacket from the first one. Wow. Two flags that were pulled were the Japanese and the Taiwanese flags. Pandering. To, nice. It, it, it says in here, this article says they're appeasing the communist. Yeah, they are because yeah. they own... Half of our studios are movie studios now. So, yes, they absolutely are. And they can say whatever they want because they're financing the goddamn movies. And it is no longer American dollars, son. So that was not surprising at all. But, you know, I'm surprised TC didn't say, hey, man, let's not fuck with one of the most iconic jackets in movie history. Like, come on. You know? Because in the trailer, if you watch it, there's an isolated scene Mm -hmm. of him pulling, you know, putting on the aviators oh yeah pulling out the jackets the jacket, putting it on yeah 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 so oh, yes um that was one of the very first things they noticed and uh look T- tc is no dummy he knows that china's he's known for years with a uh, mission impossible yeah, yeah. that was the other thing he's too so at, at comic-con they were like what are you working on next and he's like i'm shooting two mission impossible movies back to back and it was just like get that money tc I understand. At what it. point is he gonna? Are we gonna have to? Uh, is he gonna be wheeled out at some point, or will he know when to stop? Great question. Is a perfect segue, and you don't even know it. It's gonna lead us to our revolutionary figure of the day, James, and it's going to DiCaprio. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio's movie comes out this Friday night. Yep, is an original movie that he is the lead in. In Hollywood Reporter today, this morning, I read the best one, one of the best pieces I've read on him. And it's called The Last uh, Movie Star, um, who only does original content, Mm -hmm. doesn't do Mm -hmm. fucking bullshit. What do they say? He does not wear, in this article it says, he's never had to wear tights or never had to wield a lightsaber. Whereas everybody else has has franchises, sequels, all of that shit. He's never fucking had to do it. He's only done original cool shit. He's sure. never done a, a, a franchise or a sequel. You're right. Really? Yeah. Ugh. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. And so they went through why and how he was able to get away with it when no one else is. And I, by the way, man, fucking the Hollywood Reporter really calls out The Rock and Kevin Hart in this where they're, they're, they're saying, look, DiCaprio's never been a two-movie a year guy where you plug him into two movies because you can, mm-hmm. you always got to keep his face on the screen. He is zero social media. I mean, he does have, look, he's got Twitter and Instagram, but if you go there, it is all climate change posts. There's nothing of him going out. And this is something that we've talked about in the past on this show where he's the last guy that's still mysterious. You don't know what the fuck he's doing behind the scenes. This article calls that out. Um, even his, the people he works with and all that shit don't really know mm-hmm. what he does, where he goes after this. Mm, um, beautiful. All of it. And uh, with Cruz, I, I, think, I think Tom Cruise is the biggest movie star we've ever had of all time. Mm-hmm. Right? Just movie star. Let's please people. Let's put asses in seats. Absolutely. Let's fucking do it. And uh, he's been amazing for how many fucking years at this point? Right. You're close to 40. You're close to 35, 40 years that Tom Cruise has been doing big, cool shit like this. Top Gun was 35 years ago um, by the time it comes out. Whereas DiCaprio, I think, is the last actor we have who's only chosen the best directors, 
they, they said he's worked with uh, Scorsese five times, um, Tarantino now twice. Uh, Tarantino said he was supposed to do Inglorious Bastards, didn't, and that's all he would say. Okay. So he, he re- I guess he really wanted him for Inglorious Bastards, and something along the way happened mm-hmm. and uh, didn't work out. Mm-hmm. And then DiCaprio called him on Django. Okay. And said, hey, man, I love this script. I want to work on this with this character or whatever. And I guess Tarantino said, hey, man, the character you want to do is written for a 63-year-old man. Right. And he goes, what if we changed it and did this? Like, I think this would be fun. And uh, he went along with it and did it. But it was like going down his resume, it was almost like old school De Niro before he started doing De Niro shit like yeah. the caricature of himself mm-hmm. where remember De Niro was only doing like him and Pacino just cool interesting movies with the best directors in the business mm-hmm. like they weren't doing any franchise it was Raging Bull and uh The Godfather and things like that where you're like right god damn man I mean they look The Godfather ended up becoming a franchise but and a uh, sequel but yeah 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 but but I mean three is just as good as one to me in that where you're just like man that's tough um but uh this uh, this piece was was really good and i i I think they're right when they say hollywood's last movie star i really do it's true um and they they there's a quote in here that's because everybody is so focused on their brand right including us and everyone else right Right. because you have to be if you're not this rich and famous right then you have to focus on a niche and focus on a brand and really get it out there and package it in a, in a way that is suitable for you. I think, look, I think The Rock and Kevin Hart do the best they can with what they have, and that's it. Absolutely. They're not DiCaprio. They're not, they're not going to win an Oscar for best performance. No, 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 no. Or, no, no, no. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ever. And I think their branding and packaging is smart and what works for them, but they're not going to show up in wow you with a performance in a wheelchair or something like that right and uh with dicaprio there was a quote in there that just it it just said his brand is excellence and it's true like um the things that he's turned down that are in this article i didn't know that he turned down obi-wan kenobi okay to to be the new face of the franchise in star wars like um he could have been you know no no right no I, no. And I'm sure he would have been great at it. He's I think he was great uh, at everything he does. But... You, and, you and McGregor ended up doing it, but like, I'm sure he would have been great at it. Um, but he was like, no, I don't want to fucking do that shit. I want to do cool, awesome, interesting movies that are always different. And you can see me in two years, man. I'll be, I'll be in another movie in two years, he but I'm taking the, my time. Like, press part of it too. So he likes to do stuff where he doesn't have to do big. You were on fire with the segues today, James. And it is completely accidental. No, I'm just he, super smart and cool. He will only do press in this article. They said with the director themselves, the director of the film, the two of them do press. If not, he doesn't do it. No. Because he wants to focus on the movie itself and not the other fucking bullshit mm-hmm. that somebody wants to ask him. And he figures if the director is there and you start going off script and you're not talking about the movie, it'll be like, hey, man, I'm here with a director that's a little disrespectful. Right. You know? And that's smart. And I never I knew that. I love it so much. I never fucking knew that, man. Because I never, you see it, like you see these people paired off on like extra or entertainment tonight. And I've never gotten to a level where I sit with the fucking director, you know? Sure. Usually you, you'll do twosy, threesy interviews, like something like that. Whoever you're in it with, whoever's your co-star. Yeah, and if you're rolling down a, a red carpet, you'll do solo interviews, and that's kind of the gig. He doesn't do any, um, which is rad if you can get away with that, but Ugh, a studio would typically dream. tell you to go, fuck yourself. Right. And what they're saying is, because these budgets are so high and he doesn't miss, like the Bear Rate movie was the last movie he was in, I forgot, and he won the Oscar for that. Like, I forgot that was the last movie was oh, and I yeah. was like oh shit man what was that two or three years ago the bear rape movie and that's all I remembered is the is the bear rape movie the bear rape uh-huh remember the bear rapes him in the movie I mean he doesn't he, he, the bear rapes him and uh I can't like the revenants <laughs> is, is what it was yeah, called right? yeah yeah and the covenant the revenant whatever the man <laughs> I that's how like because I didn't I thought that movie was just okay like it was cool for what they went through and the hell they, they went through to make that movie, you know? 
But like, it's not a movie you watch over and over again. I'm like, I fucking love this movie. Yeah. I want to see that bear. Oh, rape. no, 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 no. Like a Friday night, everybody's over drinking four logos. Yeah, Throw that bear very, rape scene on, brother. Um, yeah. Right. Maybe a Kyle would, you know? Sure. Uh, drink some monster, punch a oh, drywall, yeah, and the watch Hardy, a bear the, rape. the other Hardy vehicle. Yeah, yeah. And Hardy, he was invisible in that fucking thing, essentially. It was just all DiCaprio, right? But the, what they were saying was, look, he turned a movie about bear rape. That's the only scene that you can pretty much take away from that movie, right? Sure. That you remember when you say it. I mean, yeah, you keep saying it, but yeah. The, Di- the DiCaprio bear rape movie, and you'd be like, oh, fuck, yeah, I remember what that was, the, the, the Re- Revenants or whatever it uh-huh, was, right? The Revenant, yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's the only scene that everybody can remember. It was $80 million to make, and a studio had to approve that of shooting and those crazy conditions. Remember, the cameras were... Breaking, oh, they, they were only, over budget by like $20 million, dollars. They would $40 only dollars. shoot at magic hour. Yes. Every day. For an entire. Which is like, how many hours do you have? Three? You, you've, t- you've two to three hours, two and a half to shoot this entire movie. And that's all the director would shoot in. The whole thing was a nightmare. They thought it was going to tank. Not only did it get, you know, nominated for best picture. I don't know if it won, but he won best actor. Uh, then the, the movie goes on to make a half a a billion dollars worldwide and that's the only scene that anybody can really remember in it i don't even know what he did in that movie except for stay alive mm-hmm. and then wear that bear afterwards or whatever yeah, like and like live in that horse remember yeah yeah, yeah live inside of a horse <laughs> like that's how great he is that he can pull that off and make a half a billion worldwide that is pure insanity to me yeah. whereas everyone else including tom cruise they said Tom Cruise couldn't walk in and say, hey, man, I want to do this fucking serious drama. Right now, give me 80 to $100 million to do it. Mm-hmm. He kind of has to do these franchises is what they were saying. And, uh, and same with the, you know, the Rock and Kevin Hart. And, and I get it. Uh, I don't know anybody else either, man. I would have said Clooney back in the day, but that's no longer. Nobody's watching that show on Hulu. Uh, Brad Pitt's in this with DiCaprio. I, I, w- I would say Brad Pitt, but this is kind of a, this is a two-hander of a movie. Mm-hmm. And um, I think that's it, right? Yeah. Can you name another dramatic actor these days that, is, it, it, that can really pull this off? Where every movie, f- I think five of his last seven movies have been nominated for Best Picture. I mean, what the fuck? That's crazy. It's crazy to me. And it's all... Uh, Maybe Martin Short. Oh, God. Your love of Martin Short is... <laughs> When I pulled up Comedians and Cars Getting Coffee and I saw Martin Short on there, I was like, oh, nobody's going to be happier than <laughs> Jesse about this. Um, boy. Oh, he's amazing. He's a pro. Yeah. But I, look, I will be there opening night to see this movie this weekend. I'm super amped about it. And uh, yeah, man, good on him, dude. Um, shit. Shit. Because I, I, again, I know we've talked about this for weeks, but I haven't been excited for an original movie in a very long time. Yeah. Yesterday I was, and then, and uh, then it wasn't after we saw it. So. For original. yesterday. Oh, yesterday the yeah, movie. Yeah. Movie yesterday. There you go. Very confusing. Still. So who's on first situation? Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then lastly. D- d- uh, Tarantino said that this this might be his last movie. He wants he's going to direct a Star Trek movie, and he goes that might be my you know he said he was going to do ten and then bail. No, he can't do that. So he's written the script. He's the Star Trek script is written, and what he said because he's he's doing press for Once Upon a Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, um, as well. And he said, look, the script is done, and they were like, what's it like? And he's like, well. It's totally different than any Star Trek you've ever seen. It's like it's like Pulp Fiction in space. And I look, I'm down for it. Fuck it. I'll go see any of those things if it's cool and new. Sure. Um, I would give a shot of that. But he said, look, that might be my 10th and I might be done with it. He's just like, man, he, without saying it, he said it of like how hard it is to get movies made these, these days. And yeah. he was just and like how I- much press they had to do that he doesn't normally have to do Ugh. i'm sure he was just like fuck this bro that's what i think Instagram about pushing all it. of this yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and um i it, i got the sense from his press in this article and everything else that tarantino was just like his exact words were um i think that i've given 
it all I can and that I have to give right now as far as filmmaking goes. And I think maybe the Star Trek one might be it. Didn't that, that Uma Thurman thing probably bummed him out too in the same way? Probably. Like, where he's just like, really, dude? Fuck you, man. Like, yeah. Probably. It bummed me out when I read it because I was just like, dude, I've done that and done crazy shit. And so probably, man, that sucks though. I'd hate to lose him because that's yeah. it. If once he goes, that's we're kind of into the abyss after that. It's not just him though. Like we're losing all of it. So No, we are. And, and look, The Lion King came out this weekend. We told everybody to go ahead and get, buy that Disney stock about six months yeah. ago, eight months ago. And it exploded and, and that was kind of the... the the last thing and of I'm like, not great. hearing that people don't like it. I mean, it is dark, but so is the animated version. So I'm not, I mean, yeah, people are liking it. So whatever I, they are, but that's, you know, look, it, it opens at 185, 185 million. And that's what you're now expecting out of every movie that you make. The only things you can do that with though, are franchises and reboots and shit like that. So I don't know, except for your cats movie. You're really looking forward to. I'm alone in the moonlight. Oh, I am so excited for Cat. Yeah, no, I know you are. Oh, I know you are. But I love uh, to be creeped out. You know, Friday nights don't bother me. Don't hassle me. I'm local. I'm going to Once <laughs> Upon a Time in Hollywood. Don't f up my s, dog, bro. That's my nights. That's my night. And then we'll 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 talk about it next week. How how great or hopefully how great it is it's gonna be great it's i mean come be, right? on it's gonna be me uh, <laughs> a man and then we'll we'll keep you abreast of the situation with our grandmas we're with our grandmothers and uh whether or not i've got to reach out to this firm we get some great producers now in the house i, I we haven't had uh, good producers in a while we get some good producers in here and uh to get those numbers that quick i'm really psyched about yeah. So. Yeah. We'll see. We'll, we'll keep you abreast of the situation here. The hard hitting news, facts, words, all grannies. of it's going down. Grannies, <laughs> Mish grannies. Uh, for Jesse Wiseman, aka the Jables, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Revolution. Subscribe on YouTube for the video show, everybody. Good night. Good night.